Hello everybody, welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Hot Wheels build. We're doing the M2, the BMW M2. Uh, I was, I sort of forgot, um, with a lot of stuff on my mind, I sort of forgot about the Forza Thon playlist, so I actually missed the Gunther Works. God damn it. Yeah, not my finest hour, however, I got an M2. So, we're gonna build that. And it's actually pretty high. I didn't realize it was a mid, a low A-class car, which is a lot for less than 400 horsepower. So, yeah, this will be fast. Sadly, we do have to get rid of the M2CS bodywork, the in favor of Forbes and stuff, and saving weight, even though I think it's supposed to be carbon fiber stuff. We're actually gonna keep that though, because that should increase drag and we want top speed. Uh, yeah, this, it should be all carbon fiber, but Forza doesn't see it that way. 305s on the rear, not terrible, but not great either. I don't think we're quite going to be the 1,000 horsepower monsters as other vehicles, simply because PI. But, um, we're going to get a 7-speed. I think that'll work. Yeah, just because we're already halfway through A-Class with a, um, stock engine. So, oh. No, we're gonna be we're in S1 class now. We're in S1 class with 370 horsepower. So, this might be a problem, in that we don't have enough power. So, what do we got? A 62 V8, five liter V10, or the racing. T I want to go with the BMW V10. It is horrifically unreliable. However, we're gonna use it. Also, we're not gaining much horse much PI anymore. That's a little alarming, I'm not gonna lie. So this is going to be a, yeah, this is a problem now in the fact that it's not gaining PI as fast as I would expect it to for a thousand horsepower. We're actually gonna have to put the three liter in there, we're gonna put the two JZ. Okay, that's disappointing. I wanted V10 Fury, but I guess we'll have to settle with this. We will at least actually get to the top of the class. Oh, yes, 899, 899, really? Really, you're gonna do this to me? Thank you. 1,135 horsepower, 806 foot pounds of torque, and 3,000 pounds on the dot. Got a pretty good power weight ratio, got okay sized tires, and a lot of power. We are actually twice the power of the 962. Let's see if that translates into lap time. We are here at the Hot Wheels Nexus Speed Circuit with our M2, our 2JZ powered M2, so if I can be a little bit clever, the uh, M2JZ. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, I, I deserve that silence, yeah. Wait, now this is the first time running this car. Wait, it's not running? It's not the first time I've run this car? Wait. So you're saying that I already ran it, and then the game audio didn't record and I found out in the editing room? So I've already done five laps in this car, which means I'm only gonna doing four flying laps, because I've already driven this vehicle to a pretty impressive time, but it didn't record the audio for the game? Oh. So you're gonna get four flying laps, because it's a bit cheaty, because this vehicle will technically have done nine laps. Because Forks is dumb. I checked my wiring, because it was still wired up the same way, and it should be good. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's got just no audio channel of any kind. When I went to my editing room, it had the video channel, and it had just no audio in any way, shape, or form. Which is awesome, because, you know, I love having to redo stuff when the game completely breaks. I also love having to redo all of my commentary without any of the surprise. Oh look, it got oversteer. I totally didn't have that happen three or four times before learning how to get used to it. I'm gonna provide some really unique and awe-inspiring commentary on this one because I've never driven this car before and I've never done some phenomenal lap times with it and I don't know how to maximize the usage of the cars of late apexes and a very impressively high top speed, by far the highest top speed of the entire series so far. It blows the Deora 2 and especially the DRCF Track Edition out of the water, but it also has the grip. 
to a lesser extent of the RCF. You can see it does have a little bit more understeer and it'll have a bit more oversteer, a little more wheel spin because it is 1100 horsepower going through the same size tires. But that does mean it's a lot faster in a straight line. So it's got about 80% of the handling, I would say. But it's got a lot more in terms of straight line speed. You see 215 there. I can't quite take that flat. You can do that for demonstration purposes because I did that in the first one. I'm trying to mirror my success essentially. But that does let me carry some mega straight line speed up the hill. Let me take a late apex here. And allows you to turn in hard and get on the power early. And there you go. You maximize that horsepower. You got to break a little early here. I love to get understeer in this section. There we go. A little bit of wheel spin on the acceleration. Fourth gear wheel spin is immense, but manageable. I kind of think we want to leave in fifth and I'm um, sorry, sixth there. I'm not really sure. It buzzes the limit right as I'm about to hit the braking zone, so I'm not really sure what is faster. And I'm mean, really low on the apexes there. You can't go higher as it will want to get oversteer on you. As much as you love to carry speed on the high banking, you can't do that in this car, else it will try to murder you. We're going to leave it in sixth, I have determined, on that little section there. And you want to get on the power nice and smooth here. It does get that oversteer. It's by far the most oversteer vehicle this side of the Diora 2. So it's kind of like an in between car, if you will, between the. Um, RCF and the Deora, but bear in mind that this is still 10 PI lower than the 962 with double the horsepower near enough. I didn't get that apex right. You can get a late apex on that corner if you get it just right, but it is a little bit finicky. 145.0. Alright, we're nearing, that was not the best lap, and we're nearing the time that, um, I did on my original run that was actually really good. I was really pleased with my recording of that. And then and then Forza came along and said, no, you can't have fun. That would be ridiculous, having fun with a video game and a recording session. How dare you? You have to go redo it late at night because I hate you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. But anyway, we're trying to break a little later, just carry a little bit more speed. There you go. A little smoother on the acceleration there, trying to get less wheels and actually deploy that power, that doesn't matter. 30 laps will count. Oop, don't downshift though, that would be bad. We managed to carry the speed, we, that basically acted as our brake by destroying the transmission, if this was actually simulation. Now we're going to leave it in 6th, because we want to carry this, we won't be able to carry too much speed on the high bangs, and risk of getting oversteer and ruining our momentum. Um, carrying momentum is more important than actually carrying pure speed. I know they seem pretty similar, but if you get oversteer, then you lose even more speed than if you just naturally lose it by not going full throttle and not going high on the banking. So it's better to just keep it nice and low and planted. Because this thing has so much power, it really doesn't matter how much speed you carry because it can just pull its way out of the corners. But yes, this is a... Uh, interesting car to drive. There we go. That's how you get the apex buzz limiter just a little bit before you shift it into, into sixth gear. And we are 144.5. There we go. This is our last lap. We are back to where we were. Thank you for being cooperative. It would be very embarrassing if I got a faster run on my original five attempts that were not recorded properly. And they would have a slower time because sports is dumb. Um, I think I actually had that happen once or twice in the history of this channel. It's not fun. It's kind of sad. It's one of the reasons why I occasionally do those throwback videos where I take old cars and we're down on their luck or something like that. We're going on in the series and rerun them. It's because of stuff like that and just because of general experience. So, let's see on this last lap if we can do anything. This has been pretty clean so far. Let's just try and keep it that way. Again, bust the limiter. Nope. Ah. You see? Like that. Just like that. Let's not do that, okay? I think a 44 5 is going to be our best run, unfortunately. I think that overseer cost us any chance. We'll give it a good shot. The rest of the run was pretty consistent. I was very pleased with the rest of the run. Let's see if that uh, little kick of overseer was enough to ruin it for us. We do still have 
one more 270 degree corner uh, before we can claim it was totally ruined. But yeah, the M2 is brutally fast, both in a straight line and on the actual overall lap. It's very, very impressive. We're trying to get a late apex power, power, power. Ugh, I don't know if that was a good lot or not. It's going. It's not going to be faster. Nope, 146. Ah, I mean, it's faster. It's a 144.5. We are within less than a second of the 962. We are almost three seconds clear of the RCF. We are three, four seconds clear of the Deora. That's a hell of a showing. That's a hell of a showing with audio this time. That's the key thing. Audio is nice. Not as nice as the M2. It's got the right mixture of oversteer in order to be fun but not dangerous. And it's controllable and it's got a lot of straight line speed. I really do think cars like this, mid A class modern cars with lots of power, will become the top tier on this simply because they have the balance of modern technology with chassis design and lightweight materials and everything while still having room to put massive power into it. So I think we're going to see a lot of rear wheel drive modern cars do very well. But anyway, that'll be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.